how to generate an optimized 3D model ready to use that you can import into the game engine and use in your game. We'll use two tools to do that. We'll start by generating uh, concept art using Midjourney. We'll start from that and then we'll use Onion. Uh, it's really hard to pronounce. We'll use Onion to generate the 3D model. Before we start, I'm Baptiste. I'm a game developer for almost 10 years now. I founded the Game Development Studio, a mobile game development studio. We published several games and generated over 35 million uh, downloads. We stopped our activity recently and that's why I uh, have time to uh, make this kind of video. So my goal here is to share with you guys a lot of tips and tools uh, that I find using AI. The goal is to be able to uh, generate full games uh, really quickly. Right now, I'm able to generate uh, full prototypes in several days uh, with AI, because of AI. Uh, so let's start. As you can see, I'm uh, starting from mid-journey. So I prepared the prompt. Uh, this one, you can uh, pause and read it if you want. Uh, you can see that it's pretty detailed. Um, that is what's really interesting with uh, concept art uh, with AI, is that you can really uh, describe what you have in mind. So... For example, uh, long dark socks uh, with white stripes, you can see, orange soccer cleats. You can go really far uh, in with what you have in mind. So, of course, I described the, the style, cartoonish proportions, simple smooth shading, uh, minimal facial details, because it will be a mobile uh, game asset, a mobile uh, character asset. So I don't need that much detail. I need something pretty low poly. So submit, we will generate another asset. As you can see, it's not my first. I'm working right now on uh, this uh, soccer character. So uh, it's not my first. Once it's complete, uh, you can see that it generated uh, me uh, four models. I can choose one. For example, this one is pretty funny in uh, the proportion. So I will save this one. And uh, we can say that it's this one that I want to generate in Onion. So this image is saved. Then you can go on uh, this link, 3d.onion.tencent.com. You arrive on this web page, and uh, of course it's in Chinese because uh, this tool is in Chinese. So you will need to translate it, of course. That's what I'm doing right now. And now it's in English. Okay, we can read it. Um, you can see that we'll, we can select uh, an option. First, you can choose whether you want to start with a prompt or an image. On our case, we will start with an image. Uh, single picture or multiple picture, picture for more details. And I didn't precise it, but it's an open source tool. And that's what's really interesting with this tool. Uh, so it's free. You you have right now you have uh, thirty or twenty uh, credits by by day, per day. So it's pretty interesting. Um, I will upload my image right now. And once it's uploaded, you can choose the model. I suggest uh, to let uh, the default settings three dot zero and we'll choose also the the model face count the, the the number of polygons you can choose up to 1.5 million polygons that is huge way too much for our games of course we we'll, we don't want to use uh, that much detailed uh, game asset but we'll still uh, select that because it's important to start with great details and then we'll be able to retopologize uh, the model so let's start. I can click on gener generate. And voila, that is the model that generated. Uh, we can see that it's pretty close, to be honest, to what I uh, to what I gave to AI. Of course, we have some texture problems, but uh, it's really possible to correct that in Blender. We'll not cover that today, but it's pretty impressive, to be honest, to be able to generate th this kind of character. In uh, several minutes, it took uh, really four minutes, and it's really close to the concept art. On the top left, we can see the number of polygons. It's 1.5 million. That is huge, but we'll keep it like that for now. We'll download the model as a FBX file. We can see that we have an option to uh, bone binding the model. We'll not do it because uh, it's easier to do it in Mixamo. 
so now I can download it. Once it's uh, downloaded, we'll leave this page and we'll return on the home page. Here we'll click on 3D Studio. This is brand new. Uh, it's a great tool you will see. Just click on 3D Studio. You will arrive on this web page and you will be able to choose uh, between generating uh, character assets, props assets, and coming soon, whole maps and levels. It will be huge. But right now, we we'll focus on character generation. It's enough. It will be, it will be enough for today. So here we can see that uh, you have the full workflow, the full process to uh, generate a game asset in the in the gaming industry. You start from the concept uh, design, then you have the geometry geometry generation, component splitting. Uh, we'll not talk about it today. Low poly topology to have optimized models, UV unwrapping, texture painting, bone binding, animation. You can see the scope, the ambition of the tool. So right now it's just the beginning, but it will be great. So what we'll do now is to uh, retopologize the model. We'll upload our model here, and you can tell me why we didn't generate the concept art here and the geometry generation. Because Midjourney is uh, more powerful to generate concept art, uh, as well as the tool from the home page to generate uh, 3D models is more powerful also than uh, this, uh, this tool here. Why? Because right there, you can see that you can always select up to uh, 300K model face count. Whereas on the front page, you were able to uh, select the V3. Here, it's the V2.5. So the V3 is more powerful. That's why I generated the model on the front page. So we'll go directly to the low poly topology. I'm gonna upload my model. Okay, it took a little bit of time, but right now it's okay, it's uploaded. So right there, I have my model. So now it's uploaded, I can click on generate now. In terms of settings, I selected uh, middle in terms of face count because the middle will, will be uh, pretty low already. And in the model section, I don't have choice. So I uh, keep that uh, by default. So let's click on generate now and let's see the low poly result. While it's generating, if you like the video and if you want to learn more about AI game development, Please leave a subscribe, I will uh, post a lot more videos. If you want to work with me, whether it's for learning game development with AI or create games with me, you can send me a DM on LinkedIn or book a call with me in the description. Et voilà, there is the result. So it's pretty low poly, um, as you can see, we got 5,000 polygons. What's important to keep in mind at this stage is that the goal is not to optimize the model as much as we can. The goal is to go to market as soon as possible with our game. At least for me, it's my goal. So we'll have all the time to optimize the model or to uh, have 3D artists coming and correcting the, the models later. Now, it will not be perfect, but we can either import that directly into our game engine and it will be good enough for a prototype or we can modify it on Blender if you have the skills. For example, the problem that, you can, that we can see here is in, at the, the elbow section, we don't have enough topology to let the body uh, bend, you know, when the, when the arm bend uh, with animations. It's not a big problem and we can fix that later. Now that my model is generated and here has uh, a correct number of polygons, then we'll go to the UV unwrapping section to prepare our model for the texturing. We don't have to upload the model as it's already uploaded. We got our model there. We can click directly on Smart UV Unwrap. Right now it's taking only 20 seconds, so it's good. Now it's done, you can see the seams in red. So, so the, the model has been uh, successfully UV unwrapped. To be honest, I'm not a 3D artist, so I don't know if the UV Unwrap is 
well done. But uh, it's not a problem. We don't need to know if the texture is good, it will be good for us. So I'm able now to go in the texture painting and in the texture painting section, I can either choose between um, uploading an image for reference or uploading multiple images or a text. In our case, I will still use the same concept art asset that we uh, got from the beginning. And now it's done. I can click on generate now. So I click on it. It tells me that it will take about one minute. Okay, now it's done. So it's finished. We have our ready to use model. Of course, it's not perfect. The texture is not perfect, but it's really amazing for me uh, that we are capable uh, today to generate this kind of asset pretty quickly and uh, use it directly into our game. In my case, I will see this character from a top view. It's a top-down uh, game, so we'll see this character from, from there. So this is not a problem for me to uh, have some uh, texturing problems, but as I said earlier, you can fix it later without any problem. So now let's download it and uh, try to import it into Unity. I can now click on download FBX. Now I can drag and drop my model inside Unity like that, so FBX. In this one, I can drag and, drag and drop it on the scene. And as you can see, we have a texture problem. It's, uh, it's like uh, we never UV unwrapped this uh, model. From my test, we can fix it pretty quickly by clicking in the Extract Textures button on in the Materials tab of the FBX file. So let's click on that. I go on my, uh, I go on my Texture folder, choose, it's been extracting. I can fix now this problem and it's okay. Right now we have our model that is pretty uh, ready to use, huh, to be honest. <clears throat> so that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a subscribe. On this channel, I will talk a lot about AI for game developers. And again, if you want to work with me on your game, please book a call with me with the link in the description or send me a message on LinkedIn. Thank you for watching. Bye.